thanks for making it, both of you. Um, no worries, nice to meet you. Well, likewise, likewise. And I first wanted to ask about the new album, which is it still coming out October 2nd? Yeah, October 2nd is the launch date on album three. Yeah, um, it was going to be May, but obviously, for obvious reasons, things had to change. And uh, yeah, we wanted to push it back just to see if there was a chance to kind of see how things went and if we could be with fans a bit more easily than than back then so right the new record has a great great title uh and i think it's cool that you guys have been putting out one track i believe a week until the release so that the fans essentially get to hear before it comes out did you know up front that you had a bunch of songs that could be put out individually and didn't need to be heard as part of the concept um i mean for us it was like we were in the studio with Feldy and we had so many songs <laughs> um, on the board um, and we were finding it really hard to kind of whittle it down to a number for the album. Um, so we had quite a good problem in the sense of we loved so many of the songs and we felt like they were all strong enough to, you know, be contenders for a single. Um, so we were kind of happy with whatever song went out whenever. Um, so I think that's good. We did a very good job on that. Uh, it's a good problem to have. Um, and then, you know, obviously COVID happened and instead of, you know, having gaps and, and everyone was missing music so much, we just thought, why not try and, you know, just kind of release as many songs um, that we can without giving too much away of the album. Um, just to keep fans engaged and to keep them happy and, and mm -hmm. alive and ourselves as well so it was fun for us because there were songs that have been released for fans to hear and we've been able to do videos for them that if COVID didn't happen they probably may not have been released as a single um mm -hmm. so that was <laughs> well this question goes to jack and then and then ryan i want to hear what your take is do you have a favorite song on the album because i know you're going to be asked that a lot of times yeah, I mean, um, I, I think it's the same as the old albums as well. Um, it depends, A, what mood you're in. Um, there could be a favourite song maybe on tour that you love to play the most. So it definitely changes. Um, but I think probably a unanimous feeling for all of us is I Want to Know, which um, was the most recent single, just because we've already, well, I mean, it's the only one off the album that we've already played live a bunch mm -hmm. of times. Um, and we just had such a nice feeling when we played it uh, last summer um, as, a, you know, uh, the last song of the set, and it just felt good, and it's, I think it's out of, you know, we love all of them in different ways, and I could probably pick many others that would take its place probably down the line, but yeah, it's just like that sort of punk rock moment, really energetic, mm -hmm. so much fun to play, and um, yeah, kind of, it puts a smile on everyone's faces, including ours, so yeah, I want to know. Same answer there, Ryan. That's a good pick. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say that. I mean, like Jack said, we even in 2019, we, we were rehearsing for an upcoming tour and we just got back from America writing songs with Beldy for the album. And I Want to Know was one of them. And he sent the demo to us the day we were in rehearsal. We listened to it and we were like, this is just so good. Like, well, let's just put it that and just start playing it and just give people a taste and just see what the reaction is um and it, everywhere we went that summer was just insane every time we played it so that was a good indication for us as well that we you know, we, yeah yeah but, um, but yeah like you said i mean all like there's so many if this is love as well was a big one for all of us it's a real moment on the album um it's so different and, to the other mm -hmm. yeah it, different flavors Something that confused me about you guys is I've heard you guys described before I really knew your catalog. I heard you described as a grunge band. Who who is it that called you guys grunge? Because there's nothing grunge about what you do. I well, mean, I think live there's definitely a grunge element. Uh, maybe on record, you, yeah. I I mean, it's kind of weird because one song might be grungy. Oh, but, sure. But 
I think it's more a live perception for us because we have always been told we're a lot heavier live than on record. Right, right. Um, which doesn't mean it's grunge, but um, we joke around and call ourselves PBG, which has grunge in it. So, I mean, we and we love grunge music. So we love, yeah. you know, the Nirvanas and Alice in Chains and Soundgarden and all, all the, you know, the kind of 90s Seattle movement and stuff. So we appreciate it a lot and we're heavily influenced by it. Mm -hmm. But... Um, like many other genres, so call it what you will. <laughs> call it what you will. And you guys have worked with a lot of great, great, talented producers. John Feldman, you've worked with Travis Barker and all that. Are those the kinds of things where you seek out top talent, or is it more a manager going, hey, I think I can get you in a room with this person? Uh, I mean, it's definitely a big part of our thought process going into any album is, you know, who's making records that we love the sound of or, or have done in the past and who do we, you know, really do in that way. Um, and we always go, you know, we want to be working with the top pros and, and the people that are, you know, going to come in and, and work with us and understand us and, and, you know, enhance, um, especially the new chapter of the Hana. Um, mm -hmm. And there was also a, a connection um, through our label 300. Um, he, Feldy, was a, a good friend of one of the A&Rs there. Um, so it just kind of worked out. We went, in, we went and did uh, two writing sessions with Feldy and immediately the first day was just crazy. Like we wrote, we, we had two amazing songs and we were like, this is incredible like the way that we're working here is so quick and um just the energy with him was just straight away electric um and then we had we had 20 20 minutes left of the first session and we were like we were a bit hungover as well as we went out the night before and we were like okay we've got two great songs like you know we've got 20 minutes left we'll come back tomorrow and john was like there's no let's do some espresso shots and let's just go for 20 minutes and see what happens <laughs> and we did and in those 20 minutes, we wrote I Want to Know, which is, you know, a huge favorite of all of us. So, yeah, that's yeah, it, it's, but it, I mean, it's, yeah, that's, that's the energy that there was. It was great. It's definitely John as well. Like, obviously, John's worked with, you know, the good Charlotte's, Blink 182's, Fever 33. So his connection in the game and obviously being the lead singer of Goldfinger that have been going for such a long time, it was definitely uh, John's just pulling in people and we're like, wow. So we have a lot to thank him for introducing us to these people because we've never had that opportunity before with any previous work of meeting, you know, like one of my idols, you know, Travis Barker. It's like, so definitely uh, we have a lot to thank him for. And I think also as well, we, we've always wanted to do that. So it's nice that it mm -hmm. kind of happened that way, you know. I, I like that you called him Feldy. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know him, so I can't call him Feldy. But <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of John Feldman's catalog, both as a songwriter yeah. and an artist and all that. And yeah. he's been through amazing stuff. Uh, did he ever tell you about the 25-year horrible publishing deal that he that he signed in the early days of his career? <laughs> no, man. Well, there, there's that, that he signed a horrible publishing deal that's going to expire in the near future. And did he ever talk about how he was asked to do the music for American Idol, but turned it down? No. Yeah, again. I think he did. I didn't know that one either. Secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's one of those guys that maybe at the time they just thought he was a typical pop punk kind of guy. But if, if you look at that staying power, that's got to be influential and, and inspirational yeah. to you guys. Absolutely. He's, 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 um, he's done it all. And I think that, you know, it's just, you can't help but respect someone like that that's been in the game for years and years. And, um, and obviously he's doing so well, but I think another thing is like, obviously you've mentioned a couple of things, um, that I might not have known about, but he, he is so like for meeting someone the first time he's so open and he's so friendly. And I think that makes all the difference with working with someone is just, their personality and, and how they work. And he works quick as well, which mm -hmm. we really enjoyed. And we, uh, we kind of looked back and was like, wow, we were kind of in competition with ourselves, which is what it's about. We don't want to come, we're not competing with any other artists. We're competing with ourselves and that's how it should be. And John was just influential with all of that. Yeah. Oh. 
Sorry to cut you off there, Ryan. Go ahead. <laughs> I think it was like almost fate, like the, what happened with us and Feldy, because like I said, it was like just straight from the beginning, uh, just just the, the person that he is as well, um, and and how kind and, and and the way that he the comfortable doing. Um, and just the way he works, just all round, he's just such a, you know, I respect him so much. And I couldn't imagine the Hunter without Feldy now, so. Cool. Most people will not say that about their producer. So I'm glad to hear that you guys hit it off like that. And another thing that really makes you distinct, in my opinion, is how much you've accomplished in five years as a band. If I've done my research correctly, you formed October 2015 which is literally five years ago you know most <laughs> bands when i was growing up did not have an album out within the first three years of forming had not toured internationally within five years had not worked with top producers like you have etc so i'm curious how much of what you've accomplished has been planned versus how much has just been organic and hard work that's a good question um, I just want to quickly say at the jump, like um, before 2015, we were a band for like two and a half years. So behind the scenes, we were gigging, writing, um, sending audition demos to everyone in, you know, England and London. So, and before that, we all went to music college and we were in other bands before that. So we'd been doing the small circuits for, you know, around seven, eight years before 2015. Right. So, so the hard work and the hustle um, was always there and had been there for a long time before, um, you know, the first album was dropped 100. So there was a lot, it was a long time coming to 2015 as well, but I'll let T carry on. <laughs> got it. Uh, yeah. Got it. <laughs> uh, yeah. There was a lot of rough times and obviously like, you know, that's just what you do when you're in a, when you get that deal. Um, and we were just doing everything possible that we could um, put into the band. And we had so many kickbacks uh, from managements and stuff. We you know, kept going and kept plugging at it, um, like Jack said. And then when 2015 came, it was like we put out Bonfire and She's Casual. And um, just immediately, you know, people started saying, oh, they really like the music. And and stuff like that and for us it was like we've been waiting for so long to to let people know what we've been working on um so we were just so happy about that and started replying and then from there it just kind of spiraled we we did a a little uk tour supporting a band called coast who were on the same label at the time um and then after that it just it just went crazy and everywhere we played people i guess started hearing the name more um and started, you know, wanting to check out what was going on. And then it's just gone mad from there. And uh, I think the relationship with the fans was a big part of it from the beginning, being so engaging with them. Um, I think that was a big part of it as well. But yeah, like people obviously don't realise, they see like the songs go up and the page go up. And it's like, oh, they started there. But it was like, there were two years before that that we were signed and writing. We had hundreds and hundreds of songs and we were constantly like, let's go, we're ready to go, let's, let's do it. And they were like, no, oh, you know, not yet, oh, they've got this, you know. So there were, there were things in plan, but um, yeah. There was you did your homework. Road. You yeah, did your yeah, homework, yeah. and that's the great thing, and I, I guess you need to put your team on the Wikipedia thing and make sure that the fake news doesn't get out there more about this is a band that's only been around five years. I apologize about that confusion. That so good. I mean, technically, uh, we have been around five years as the Hunter. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, we had a band name before 2015 as well. But yeah, that's kind of like everyone. It takes a long time. A lot of the yeah. big bands doing things of yeah, slog away for like 10 years before anything comes of it. So I think it makes you appreciate it more. Sure. Well, two quick no. questions and then you guys are free for me because let's face it, there's other reporters who are going to ask the same questions that I am. And, you know, you have to have those breathers between those questions when you explain that you've not been a band for five years. Uh, and the first <laughs> one is... Uh, I actually what? think you're the first person that's asked that, to be honest with you, in that way. Yes. People, <laughs> people have said, you know, oh, how long have you been a band? But, yeah, no, we've not, not many times got to explain what happened before. 
Yeah. Exclusive. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys have been stuck home like everybody more this year than I'm sure any year in the last five years, seven years, whatever it is. Any TV recommendations that you could pass on that people should be watching? Oh. <laughs> Good question. Uh, when you start to. Well, the boy boys on Amazon, 100%. Oh, yeah. Um, Ross you know Bros. Uh, it's bad. Ross Bros is sick. If anyone, if, if you like vintage cars that get done up with a cool cast, that's that's a good, good chill watch. And, cool. Uh, this always happens, like when, like I feel like when you know you watch loads of shit and then someone asks you and then you go blank, you're just like, what the fuck have I even been doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, new um, episode of The Boys hits tomorrow, so I'm sure you'll be watching like me. <laughs> yeah. I've been. Uh, I've like I've never watched Homeland before, so I've started that. Um, I just started watching. Uh, was it True Detective or no? Um, what's the other one we were talking about yesterday? The really really good one that's like murder mystery. Oh fuck, man! Oh, Mindhunter. Mindhunter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now well, I see uh, Cars and Mindhunter. You are a pretty diverse guy, there, Jack. <laughs> I like my cars and mysteries. <laughs> exactly. We like, like we love a bit of fantasy. Um, oh, we love horror as well. We love a good horror. We watched horror. Secret Window not long. Yeah. Uh, Secret Film. It's one of my favorites. Um, we just started a cinema club, so. Oh, okay. So you like vote? You vote for what you want, and we draw it out the hat. And if you win, you win. Yeah. <laughs> All the all the genres. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of time this year, so <laughs> as you can <laughs> tell. <laughs> well, my closing question for both of you, or either of you, is any last words for the kids? Yeah, thanks a lot for supporting us. Uh, uh, you know, over the last five years, and obviously this year even more than ever because it's obviously been tough for everyone. And uh, yeah, we want to thank everyone for their patience and and yeah, for everyone like just sticking by us and. Yeah, we can't wait to uh, get back out there and see everyone again. Yeah, T? Yeah, man, stay safe. Um, take care of yourselves. Take some time for yourselves. Try and turn negatives into positives because this year has been one hell of a shit show. Um, <laughs> yeah. Breach. <laughs> try and use that energy to fuel you and just prepare and get ready for when shit gets back to normal and we'll be waiting with some kick-ass shows with a brand new album our best album yet 100% um, new honey thank you so much congratulations on the almost release of the record hope to see you live in New York when this all ends but really thank you guys both for your time and keep up the greatness there no worries we'll see you in New York thank you man thanks take care Outrocast.